Hi, my name's Peter Coffin and Digimon, I mean Pal World, just happened. Digimon, Digital Monster, Digimon are the champions. So on your left is Exhibit A, the real genuine Pokemon. And on your right, why these are the imposters. They like, like in all seriousness, it's like they took some kind of inspiration from Pokemon. And that's wrong. And here's the same thing, except for, uh, it shows how Pokemon ripped off Dragon Quest. <laughs> it's almost like art exists in this cycle where artists take inspiration from what came before them or something. It's, it's, uh, I don't know what it is. Oh yeah, plagiarism. It's called plagiarism. It's funny how we spent the last few months talking about YouTube plagiarism and AI stealing from creators being bad, only to reward a game doing both with 2 million plus sales. These are pretty blatant. The fake Meowth even looks like they took the texture from Pokemon Sword. Wonder if we'll find any one-to-one -one assets in the game's files. But it's just about ethics, right? It's not about protecting the IP of large companies. No, it's definitely not about reinforcing and maintaining bourgeois property law. No siree, Bob. Pal World execs brace for H Bomber Guy video. Almost like hard drive can tell this is all connected. Pal World, an arc-like game described as Pokemon with guns, has seen concurrent player numbers swell into record-breaking territory this week. But according to execs behind the game, the team is not celebrating, choosing rather to spend the time preparing for an attack from their most feared enemy, H-Bomber Guy. Some employees think they should actually be bracing themselves for Nintendo instead. If anyone is going to come after us, it's Nintendo. I mean, they've even gone after fan projects. What are they going to do when they see the same fan art they went after in our game? Said character artist Pierre Despero obviously a fake name because this is a satirical article. When asked why defending against H Bomber Guy was prioritized over Nintendo, the executive team replied, Nintendo can't prove anything. We have plausible deniability. H Bomber Guy, though, can get the people against us, and that's far more damaging. What's the point of stealing if you can't profit? Hard drives saying the things that H Bomb won't. If you recall, H Bomber Guy says that it's actually not about profit and success. Why do people plagiarize? We've talked a lot of superficials in this video, wanting money or prestige or clout or to get one over on your enemies by jacking their stuff, but these are small things. There's other ways of getting those. It's actually about filling an existential void inside of oneself, a void that can only be filled by being like people who know their place in the world. There's a little bit of nothing in all of us, and we'd like to fill it with something. Opening your web browser and seeing someone who seems to have it figured out, making you feel better and entertaining you, and seeming to attract an audience on this roulette wheel of a planet, that's powerful. There's someone who seems to understand what they're supposed to be doing, and it's working. Yeah, and that's stupid because it's actually about what Hard Drive understands it's about um, property, specifically uh, owning it, which means having complete and total control over it and stopping other people from doing it. I've been working on this documentary about platonic elitism and the ideology of the philosopher kings uh, as it pertains to this. And wow, pal world uh, is the culmination. I'm dunking this crap right into the script to that, let me tell you. So... A lot of the thrust of that documentary is about the nature of creativity. And the idea that Pal World is somehow wrong for having Pokemon-like monsters is horseshit. Of course, a lot of this came from Twitter. A couple of days before Pal World came out, this tweet apparently uh, incited a lot of discourse. And when that one got a whole bunch of engagement, of course everybody else got in on it, because that's how incentives work. Since I'm bored as hell, I'm gonna make a thread of this, I think. Pal World Design Analysis trying to spot every Pokemon they jumbled together. Like, seriously, look at this shit. Ears droop the same way. Fur on edge of face. Body shape. Barney Frank looked disgusting. Nipples protruding in his blue shirt before Congress. 
very, very disrespectful. Do not steal my OCs. That's original characters. It's it's when fan artists get mad from other people stealing their derivative art. But you know, here's the fun thing. Uh, this whole thing has made me completely rethink fan art and fan fiction and all that. What I wish that fan artists and fan fiction writers would do is reject those terms entirely and call what they're doing original and say that it is with no respect for intellectual property law. Because that's exactly what it is. It's an evolution of art. Fan art is an inherently capitalist classification, which is used to denigrate the art of people who actually do put time and effort into an IP uh, that they don't own. Uh, and the fact that IP and ownership even exist are, are the reason why they aren't a legitimate artist. Oh, they're legitimate artists. Thank you. I was talking to my dad about the wheel. No one human being is credited with the wheel. And this is because the wheel is the result of many, many different people taking in information and eventually realizing, oh, if it's round, it's easier to push. Some guy who figured out that if you put stuff in a box, it's actually easier to move around. It eventually gets too heavy, though, and pushing the box is the only option. At some point, people realize that if you don't have corners on something, it can go over different surfaces differently. At some other point, people think, wait, what if you had no corners? Who knows how much time it took for the wheel to develop? First off, why don't we credit one person with that? Well, because it's absurd, for one. It's so clearly the work of many, many people over many, many years. Second off, it's because we didn't live in an age of property at that point. We didn't exist in a mode of capitalist ownership. But there's no invention that came to being the way the flux capacitor did in Back to the Future, where Doc hit his head one day. Like, that's, it's total bullshit. That's not how inventions happen. A magical, brilliant individual doesn't just pull them out of the ether. Everything is built on what came before it. Everything, everything is derivative. No matter how new it feels, it was derived from something. Some of that is completed work, stuff that people have seen. I'm sorry, but this kind of shit, pointing out how two things that are both clearly different are exactly the same because of ears drooping or fur on the side of the face? Shut the fuck up. Should everybody who makes a first-person shooter have to pay id software a fee? Should id software have to pay a fee to Dungeons and Dragons? And here's the problem. The incentives and rewards are all based on property. So, it's zero-sum. You give out the reward once to the person who invents it. That's absolutely insane and not how things should work. The reward should be given out based on labor because labor is what gives things value. If no human had to do anything in order to bring something into existence, no one would think that thing was worth anything. But with all this focus on property, people are completely missing the idea of changing the relation that rewards on that zero-sum basis. I don't know if you've ever heard of crunch in video game development, but it's this period of time where they overwork people to an insane extent because they need to meet deadlines. And for whatever reason, there's no such thing as like a major video game that gets developed without a period of crunch. It's so serious that people have been overworked to the point of literal death. Like you can find stories of people dying from working like 96 hour weeks for like 12 weeks in a row and not eating right or sleeping right or any number of other problems. But here's what the developer of PAL World says on their careers page. The era of making games while suffering is over. At Pocket Pair, we value not only users, but also developers who make games very much. Overtime is basically non-existent. Attendance hours are also flexible. With a focus on in-house development, we have a relaxed development process. We also have comprehensive welfare benefits, creating an environment where game development can be done comfortably and with a relaxed mindset. 
Instead of competing with other companies in terms of quality, we're pioneering a unique path with unique ideas. Now, I can't claim to know if this is true, but I can tell you that it's what these people claim to care about until this whole H-bomber guy plagiarism thing became everyone's obsession. And that isn't to say like, oh, wow, this company is so great. That's how the world should be. Instead, it's more to say people's focus has shifted away from why people aren't getting rewarded for their labor to the preservation of capitalist property dynamics. The ownership of the means of production is the means to dictate how incentives and rewards are executed. And in the capitalist mode, they're executed in this way where the workers don't really matter. That's all lost here. Instead, all we're talking about is AI and people copying art. Well, I've got news for you. People are always going to copy art. That's how art perpetuates as a thing. The most commercialized bullshit is art in the exact same way the best piece of art you've ever seen is art. There is no high art. There is no low art. There is just art. Some of it you like and some of it you don't. Some of it has a corporate agenda embedded into it and some of it doesn't. But hey, that kind of criticism is something we could be focusing on if we weren't spending all of our time talking about what is and isn't real art and who is and isn't a faker and a stealer. Legally, you can make a Mickey Mouse cartoon now. That is a legal thing in 2024. And you know what the media structures are doing? They're acting like that's a bad thing. And the things that people are doing with Mickey are somehow tainting Mickey. And that's horseshit. Intellectual property law, you see, isn't forever. It eventually does expire and things go into the public domain. So obviously we need to make it into an ethical concern. So obviously Disney is the one true Mickey creator and their Mickey cartoons are the only real ones. Or hell, actually, you know what? It's just because of voids in people's souls. Otherwise the people that can come up with original stuff would be. I just hate this issue so much. It's such an anti-human shitty thing. It, it completely disregards how people have progressed um, technology, art, culture, and everything, which is history, the culmination of the remixing of everything that came before. It's just garbage. And part of it is due to the backlash of how terrible movies have gotten. But the last video I made, I think pretty well encapsulates what's wrong with movies. I would really like you to go ahead and watch that video because if I just repeat those points again, it's kind of pointless for it to exist. So go back. It's called Garbage I Am Legend Video Essay. I'll give you a hint. It's about making movies into consumer products, but probably not in the way you think. I think that's all I got for you today. Um, like, comment, subscribe, maybe become a patron. Thanks a ton for watching, and I hope you have a good day.